thing for right now. Hello, hello. Welcome to the University of Minnesota to the new Global Go for Sessions. Welcome and orientation. I'm super excited to see you here. If you can chat where you are joining us from, there's a button below where it says chat. If you can chat with all of us where you're joining us from, that would be great. I know a lot of people are here in Minneapolis and St. Paul. Okay, I see, I see a few folks joining us. I see about 10. Welcome, welcome. So we'll just take maybe a little bit of a, a few minutes to help people to wait until people are joining us. If you can chat where you're where you are joining us from. Are you joining us from your home nation? Are you joining us here from the US? You can chat with each other. I'll also ask our panelists to type where you're joining us from. A lot of us are joining you from not very sunny, somewhat sunny St. Paul, Minneapolis. Welcome, welcome. I recognize a few names. Atlanta, London must be nice today. Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, okay. Minneapolis, Duluth, Minnesota. Oh, I do love Duluth. Duluth is up north from us, from the Twin Cities. We have someone that joined, is joining from Minneapolis, but was in Atlanta last year. Spain, buenos dias, buenos dias. India, welcome, welcome. Okay, well, I will ask Ray to uh, play a video for us while we wait for other folks to join us. Welcome to, the Welcome to the University of Minnesota. Beginning college at the U of M is a powerful opportunity. It is an opportunity to share with thousands of other incoming students from over 140 countries who speak languages and have lived experiences different from your own. Some of you might be living home for the first time or might be the first person in your family to attend college. Some of you might come from a small town that was quiet where everyone knew everybody and you could see the stars at night. Now, you're in a big city, and you can't help but notice its beauty and chaos. Some of you come from much larger cities like Beijing, New York, or Seoul, and the Twin Cities feels like a small town where you might be more easily recognized. Some of you will continue to live with your families and are commuting to campus, and you are learning to balance your time on campus with your family responsibilities. Some of you are questioning your identities in the amazing spectrum of gender, sexuality, political beliefs, and spirituality, and you wonder where are your people who will support and connect with you. Some of you are introverts who are continuously learning to live in a world built around extroverts. Some of you have disabilities and have to figure out how you will be supported to gain access to new opportunities. You are entering a powerful and intense time in our country with unprecedented challenges and conflicts. The University of Minnesota is actively working to be a diverse and inclusive institution, and you'll be called to rise up when you see injustice. But before you solve any problems, know that you will make mistakes, and sometimes you'll be disappointed, and inevitably disappoint others. At times, you might feel lost as you enter this university, but pay attention to who's around you. Who are you choosing to make connections with? Who are you afraid to talk to? Who are you curious about? Whose life inspires you? Who can you make long-lasting friendships with? Don't forget that learning on this campus happens beyond the classroom. Push yourself to learn from someone who might look different from what is familiar to you. Speak with someone who might challenge the way you view the world. Take a risk. Ask questions. Connect beyond what you currently know. This is the shared opportunity for connection at the University of Minnesota.
Well, again, thank you and welcome and congratulations on becoming a University of Minnesota Gopher. You are now officially part of our uh, of our family. And as you start your journey with us and, and as an international student, we affectionately call you a global gopher. The gopher or Goldie Gopher is a university mascot. And here in the US, we call our students sometimes by the name of our mascots as a collective group. So you are now all called, called gophers and we will call you global gophers. My name is Marina Wehara and I use she, her pronouns and I'm the director for student engagement here in International Student Scholar Services. You probably notice that a lot of us are sharing our pronouns in our names. We do so because we want to be inclusive and to make sure that folks don't assume what our preferred pronouns are. You will notice that as you come here to the University of Minnesota and other places around other universities that they might ask for pronouns. Feel free to share them as you feel comfortable, but some of us will share those at the beginning of meetings or in classrooms um, or when we're talking to other people. It is also okay to not feel comfortable sharing them as you arrive here. So as you arrive here, make sure you ask questions and you reach out to us for any of that. Uh, just like many of you that are here in the audience today, I used to be an international student from Argentina, and I remember the excitement that it was in preparing and planning to um, arrive here. And I also know how important it is to receive an official welcome from our leadership in international student and scholar services. So I am excited to now introduce you to our International Student Scholar Services Associate Director for Advising and Counseling, Catherine Gaylord Miles, to do the official University of Minnesota welcome. So excited to see all of you here today. My name is Catherine Gaylord Miles and I use she her pronouns. I serve as the Associate Director for Student Advising and Counseling, and so my team helps with all the immigration paperwork and immigration questions that you have coming to university. I know that you are at a point where it can be exciting and a little nervous and scary coming to a new place. I came to the University of Minnesota in January. I worked with international students for a long, long time, but I'm new to the University of Minnesota and folks were so warm and friendly and welcoming. And I feel like I'm at home here at the university now. And so I hope that you have the same experience. Being a part of the international community here, um, you will have so many different opportunities and we are just so excited to have you a part as a part of the community. You add so much to the university and to our, you know, the student body here. As you come into the university, my advice to you is to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I know that I came in and asked a lot of questions and I've been in the US and I've been in university settings for a long time. And so there are lots of new things ask questions. Uh, there's a whole team here to help welcome you. If you have questions, ask them in the webinar today or send us an email at issnew at umn.edu. At this point, I'm going to pass the webinar back over to Marina to talk a little bit more about the content for today. Thank you, Catherine. As we share with you the next slide, um, for today, the webinar is sponsored by International Student Scholar Services and our campus partners at Orientation and Transition Experiences and Undergraduate Admissions. We also have partners from a college, from the College of Liberal Arts, um, and we have an academic advisor as well. Um, as you can see, we have several folks that are joining us from different areas of our office, including um, advising, the ISSS checking and welcome team, the sponsor student team, as well as our very own Go Go, Go for Experiences leadership team. So we have actual students here as well. A recommendation for all of you, you may choose to select to view this webinar from a gallery or having side by side, whatever is your preference. Uh, we will have these recorded so that you can then review a lot of the content um, afterwards. I will now pass it on over to our amazing Senior Supervising Leader, Soliana, who will discuss with you how to navigate this webinar and what to expect in the next few months. Thank you, Marina. Hi, everybody. My name is Soliana Shakur. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm an upcoming junior studying computer science here at the university. I am also an international student from Ethiopia. 
Uh, this webinar aims to officially welcome you as a university student and provide information to continue your next steps to prepare for your virtual orientation. And GGE, also known as Global Gopher Experiences, has a bunch of fun events coming up for the summer, mostly online until August. So we encourage you to sign up for the next webinar and all of our Global Gopher Experience sessions. Actually, our next one is going to be next week on Wednesday, and it's going to be dealing with advising academic and both ISSS advising. Uh, now I'll talk more about the format of this webinar. The first 30 minutes uh, will be our main speakers sharing updates regarding orientation and first steps. Uh, the next 30 minutes will be an open Q&A for UMN related questions. Uh, only questions submitted uh, through the registration or pre-submitted questions will be answered, but we also have a feature of Q&A here on the Zoom. If you look at the bottom of the screen and you will be able to sh share your questions. And you can also remember that the Q&A can be anonymous, so you don't have to share your name. Uh, questions specific to your situations may not be answered, so we encourage you to reach out to our email, isssneo at umn.edu. And if we run out of time to answer any questions, we will follow up later and you can send us to the same email address that is going to be shared in the chat. Uh, and I'll pass it on to Lizette, Director of Orientation. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for that welcome. My name is Lizette Rebayeto. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I serve as the Director for Orientation and Transition Experiences here at the U. And what our office does is that it welcomes all of our new students to the university and we prepare them with a variety of programs that we offer both virtually and in person. Many of you have already received our email that asks you to start your new student checklist. The new student checklist is your first step in initiating the process of joining us and doing all the things that are required of you to be prepared for orientation and registering for classes and ultimately coming to the US and being with us here for welcome week. So you see here on the screen that that checklist can also be accessed via checklist.umn.edu. It is also accessible via an email that was sent to your UMN account, as well as your primary email account. Once you log in with your university credentials, meaning your university email address, your university password, and your, your dual factor, you'll be able to go in and start your requirements for orientation. One of the first things that you'll be asked to do is complete a survey titled, Tell Us About Yourself. And this survey really allows us to take uh, your shared information that you provide to us to better serve you during orientation and your first year here at the university. We'll ask you questions about how you anticipate spending your time while you're with us. We'll ask you questions about your involvement prior to joining us here at the U and many other questions. Please know that as you're sharing your answers, we will be taking a, a deep dive into those responses and ensuring that we think critically about how our services, our programs, and the experience we provide to you is tailored to the needs that you have shared with us. Once you complete the Tell Us About You survey, we will ask you to go ahead and select an orientation date. Our orientation dates for international students are two part. We wanna ensure that you're able to have your courses selected before your arrival to campus in late August. So you will be able to select an online orientation date, which allows you to meet with your academic advisor from your specific college of admission and your specific degree of study. You will get to select that date that best fits your schedule as well as the schedule that your college has. They will communicate with you on the online orientation uh, link so that you can join them in the conversation and you'll be able to meet with an academic advisor that will support you in the selection of your academic courses for the fall semester here at the university. Once you do that, you will also be asked to select the subsequent date to join us in August for our international student orientation that happens in person. 
Before you complete your online orientation experience and registering for classes, there is also a next step titled orientation prep course. This is a Canvas course that is delivered to you um, and is specific to you as a student based on your area of study. We ask that you complete this before your virtual appointment with an academic advisor to ensure that you have a greater understanding of what you will be doing during this appointment with your college and your advisor. So once you complete those two steps over the summer, um, we will continue to communicate with you over email and send you information about next steps and preparing for your arrival to campus, as well as preparing for welcome week. Our office believes that orientation and welcome week are just two steps in your overall transition to the university. We know that this is a huge part of your experience and that you will be navigating a new environment, likely a new country, and many other things. And so orientation in August, as well as Welcome Week, are designed to help you better acclimate to the university, get to know the surrounding area, as well as learn campus traditions and the various experiences, student groups, and much more that we have to offer here at the U. We look forward to having you join us at Welcome Week. And as you prepare to come to campus for Welcome Week, as I mentioned, you'll receive emails about selecting activities during Welcome Week, as well as more information on how to engage during that time period. This reference on the screen shows you those next steps. So we want you to make sure that you're claiming your university email address, that you're using that email address to log into your new student checklist, that you're completing your new student checklist by selecting a remote orientation date, as well as an in-person orientation date, completing your online orientation prep course, and then ultimately reviewing information for Welcome Week in July. We will be happy to serve you and answer any questions. On the previous slide, there was an email address titled otinfo at umn.edu, and it is also in the chat. You can email us at any time, and our staff is ready to help you and answer your questions. Please note that sometimes it may take us a day or two to respond to you, but please also note that we are very excited to get the information that best serves you and the questions answered that you may have in your email. We look forward to seeing you this summer throughout our online orientation experiences, as well as in person in August and September for Welcome Week. We wish you safe travels as you make your journey to the university, and we can't wait to be with you in just a few short months. Thank you. Thanks, Lizette. Hi, everybody. I'm Cody, and I work in checking in new international students. Uh, in addition to the orientation checklist, international students also have required tasks just for ISSS. In our check-in process, there are some tasks you need to do before you arrive and some after you arrive. We call them the new Global Gopher Required Tasks. This task list guides you through pre-arrival and post-arrival requirements that you must complete and information you need to know as you prepare for your first semester. You can see a picture of the list here. You'll find it in my ISSS. Some of these tasks are important for visa regulations. So to ensure that these tasks get done, ISSS will place a registration hold on your account on August 28th if you have not completed these required tasks. You will not be able to register for classes or modify your registration after that date, August 28th, until these tasks are complete. If you complete the list before then, no problem, it doesn't affect you. So my advice is to start early and be ahead of schedule, not behind. On the next slide, you can see one of these required tasks, iPrep or the International Student Preparation Course. It's a separate course from the Orientation Prep course, and this one is just for international students. You need to do both. IPREP is an eight-part online course full of very useful information about school policies, your role as an international student, life on campus, and more. It will take a few hours to do, 
So set aside some time for this one and get to it soon. As you prepare to attend your orientation and get registered for classes, there is an important visa regulation for you to be aware of. U.S. visa regulations require that F1 and J1 visa status students enroll full time. As a UMN international student, this means that you need to take a minimum of 12 credits each fall and spring semester. During your orientation, your academic advisor may encourage you to take a minimum of 13 credits, as this will help you stay on track toward degree completion and result in a flat rate tuition charge. With the flat rate tuition charge, any credits that you take beyond 13 are available at no additional charge. It is important also for you to be aware of online course limitations before you register for your first semester of classes. International undergraduate students must take a minimum of nine in-person credits each fall and spring semester. Once you have enrolled in at least nine credits of in-person uh, credits, the uh, remainder of your courses can be online or remote. I'm now going to pass it to Soliana to share how to stay connected with ISSS. Thank you, Cody. Uh, there are many ways to stay connected with ISSS as a new international student, including the new student website at ISSS, isss.umn.edu slash new, and our global go for experience website that was linked in the chat. You can also contact us at isssnew at umn.edu via email and an ISSS staff will respond to you as soon as possible. I remember two years ago when I was in your place, I was very excited and also very nervous. I had tons of questions and concerns uh, coming to a foreign country and for my upcoming university journey. Luckily, we have lo lots of resources supporting us and especially in ISSS. As an international student, it's never wrong to ask and connect with your resources. So again, welcome to our Go Global Gopher family and make sure to follow us on our social media at ISSS UMN. And I'll pass it on to Marina to introduce the Q&A session. Thank you, Soliana. And thank you to Lizette and Cody who presented with us today and gave us important information about what to do and what to expect as you're arriving here. Today, we are joined by multiple people in the University of Minnesota, including our campus partners over at Admissions, Kaoru, who's the Assistant Director of International Admissions, as well as Angus, who is an advisor at College of Liberal Arts, and other folks in ISSS, such as Lisa, Mary Beth, Alejandra, Nucci, and Jaden. I will ask these folks to introduce themselves when I ask them to answer questions on the Q&A, but we do have some pre-submitted questions I would like to ask live for today's session. If you do not remember how to submit a question, there's a button right below your screen. There's a, a box with a question mark. If you click on that, you can now submit questions on there. You can select to do anonymous questions or um, submit them with your name and people will try to answer them throughout our Q&A portion. And if you have any additional questions that are specific to you, please email us at isssnew at umn.edu. Any questions that we are unable to answer, we will be reaching out to you again via that email. And if you have any specific questions around academic advising, we do have a session next week on May 29th, where we will be asking our academic advisors to share how to prepare for your meetings with them. So we'll get started with our first set of questions that we have prepared that were submitted for our campus partners over at International Admissions, Kaoru. So Kaoru, I have a few questions for you as you prepare to turn on your camera as well. And I'll be also asking you to introduce yourself. We have a question that someone submitted. How are international students supposed to submit their final transcripts? I saw on the website that it's said to send by, by mail, but I was wondering, does that also apply to international students? Thank you, Marina. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Kaoru Nan. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the assistant director of international admissions. I oversee freshman and transfer admission application process, 
as well as transfer credit evaluations. I'm super excited to be here today and my team, international admissions team, and I can't wait to see you on campus this fall. Please feel free to stop by our office at the 240 Williamson Hall on the East Bank just to say hello. Okay, to answer the question, first question, um, prior to enrolling at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, all confirmed students will need to submit the official complete academic documents from all secondary schools attended, along with proof of high school graduation and official test scores from the testing agencies by July 1st. And we will compare the official documents and test scores with the information you self-reported at the time of application. And all documents not in not an issue in English must be in the original language and include a certified true word for word English translation. And official documents are those that are original or attested copies of original academic documents that are mailed in a sealed stamped envelope directly from the secondary school or examination board and scanned or electronic copy of an official document submitted by a student is considered not official, unofficial. However, we accept electronic copies from schools if they can submit the documents from their school domain email addresses directly to admissions at umn.edu. So not from Gmail or Yahoo Mail or 163.com email address. Uh, we need to, and we also need to be able to identify the senders of the emails. We also accept electronic copies submitted from schools through Common App until July 1st. And if you're unsure what documents you need to submit, uh, please check our website about the secondary sample document. And Please share the link by chat. Hey, thank you, Kaoru. Um, our, our leaders have been sending those links on the chat, so please make sure you click on those. But we will also be sharing a follow-up of this as well. Kaoru, I have a few more questions around admissions as well. As you probably know, some of our students haven't graduated because they still have a few more months. What should be done if high school results only arrive in August? Right. So we have set your final secondary education document due date based on your curriculum. For instance, like IB diploma certificate by July 15, A-level exam results by August 31st. So we understand the documents and exam results may be delayed due to, to um, circumstances beyond your control. So please contact admissions admissions at umn.edu if you need to adjust the due date of your final secondary educa uh, educational document. Thank you, Kaoru, and thank you for being flexible in understanding a lot of our international students' uh, challenges that they may have with transcripts as well. Um, one more question uh, for you. Can we know more, how can we learn more about uh, scholarships? Right, and so they, Office of Admission does not really administer the scholarship. So you need to uh, contact the One Stop Student Services. One Stop Student Services manages a web page with information about scholarships for enrolled current U of M students. And then uh, please share the link uh, in the chat. And this page includes links to college and academic department scholarships as well as a scholarship search tool for enrolled and current students. And several scholarships are offered to enroll the students each year. And also remember to check in with your college student services office and your academic advisor for other opportunities. Thank you, Kaoru. It seems like just like what our all of our other campus partners have mentioned is for you to always ask the question and reach out. You never know what kind of resources are available for you at the University of Minnesota. And as if you have noticed, there's a lot of resources and the university is quite large. 
So it's always good to ask for help and reach out. I will now be inviting uh, Lizette back on stage to answer and clarify a few more questions around orientation and as well as um, answering questions around housing as well. Um, Lizette, do you know if there is guaranteed on-campus housing for freshman students? Yes, Marina, there is guaranteed housing if students, actually today is the deadline, if they fill out the housing um, registration and um, need for housing by today, May 22nd, and they pay the fee to do so, that guarantees that they will have housing on campus through our university housing department. Thank you, Lizette. And I cannot um, emphasize the importance of meeting that deadline. There is a lot of housing options, but we have heard from many, many of our students that living on campus is one of the best opportunities for you to make friends and have a community, as well as being guaranteed. I would like to remind students that it is a legal document once you sign up for on-campus housing. So make sure that um, if you do sign that you are committing to that location as well. If you have any questions, you can email them at housing at umn.edu. Um, Lizette, by chance, do you know when international students can move in to their assigned dormitories? Great question. Let me let me take a quick look for that answer, Marina. Um, we do know that our international students are able to come a few days earlier than the typical move in, um, and that's coordinated with our colleagues in housing. And there is a small fee that they'll have to pay to be able to do so. And we try to work with them to ensure that they're able to make it to orientation. Um, but I'll look for that date and put it in the chat as soon as um, we're done with our questions. Thank you, Lizette. Um, we will also be having uh, Housing and Residence Life presenting with us in a few months as well. So they'll be talking about the international early arrival housing. Again, um, the easiest way to move into your dormitories is perhaps staying at the international early arrival housing because then that gives you some early access to move in as well. Thank you, Lizette, for looking for that. Um, again, just a reminder for students today, how can I register for orientation date or when do I actually choose uh, my classes for fall? So you are able to select an orientation date. Um, once you've logged into your new student checklist, you've completed the tell us about yourself survey. The immediate next step is going to be to select your online orientation date to be able to meet with your advisor and start selecting your courses for the fall. You will then be asked to also join us in August for our in-person orientation that is tailored specifically to international students followed by Welcome Week and enjoying that experience as well as connecting with other new students. So we cannot stress enough going into your new student checklist, completing your Tell Us About Yourself survey, and then selecting an online orientation date to meet with your academic advisor that best meets your schedule and availability. Thank you, Lizette. And we had someone submit a question on the Q&A. So that is the hybrid freshman orientation. When you do select your classes in July, just like Lizette said, and then you complete the following um, in-person requirements in August. So yes, you will be able to select your classes. This is an exciting new update for a lot of our international students. You do not need to wait until August to select your classes. So you don't have to uh, worry about having those seats being filled up. If you do remote orientation um, or hybrid orientation, you're able to select your classes um, as well. Um, Lizette, can you also share with us um, what does orientation day look like in August when it is in person? Yes, our orientation day in August consists of a check-in process. Um, we will be checking you in, providing you a name tag and some materials that will be resourceful to you in your time here at the university. We have campus tours that we offer to you. So we have a student leader that is walking you and guiding you around campus and showing you key buildings in and around the area. Um, we also have a resource fair where we have over 15 different 
university offices and departments that are sharing with you information about their services and how you can leverage those services that are um, free to you as a student for many of those. After the resource fair, there is a presentation um, by myself and a couple other university officials welcoming you to the university, sharing more about the academic journey here at the University of Minnesota. Um, and then we have you go meet with your college once again. And so you'll have a second touch point with your college and being able to check in with them. Um, they'll share more information about what to expect in your first semester and your first year. They'll be able to answer more questions about your course schedule during that time. And then um, we also provide you meals during the orientation experience and the ability to build community with other international students on campus. Thank you, Lizette. And, and one final question, perhaps, um, if you could indulge us, um, what is it like for uh, for transfer students? Would you be able to share that? And maybe Angus, who is an academic advisor, can also share what to expect um, when meeting with students. Sure. So our, our transfer students also have the opportunity to have an online orientation experience. And so the way that our orientation system is set up is that once a student completes their tell us about a uh, you survey, they will be given a set of dates that they can select that is specific to them and their student type. So our new freshman first year incoming students, they will see dates that are specific to them and their course of study. And the system also recognizes transfer students as transfer students. And so it provides them with specific dates that are um, the ability for them to meet with an academic advisor that knows the transfer student experience within their college. And so they'll get to meet with an advisor remotely as well. There are dates for the transfer experience um, that happen remotely in July. And then we have in-person dates in August as well. And so and any international transfer student can select those transfer July dates, be able to meet with an academic advisor uh, and get their questions answered about their courses that they've taken to date at another university and what that means here at the University of Minnesota. I think I don't have to say anything, let's answer everything. <laughs> it's like, okay. Um, I am the CRA academic advisor. Um, I, I'm sorry, College of Liberal Art means CRA, yeah. Um, so basically, let's just say the same thing. So yes, during the orientation, at the last step, which is you will be seeing one, you will be seeing your assigned advisor during that time. Um, during that time, we the advisor will also see your academic uh, history. During from that, we will be taking like what classes you should be taking for next semester in fall. Thank you, Lizette and Angus, for answering those questions. I know Angus will be at our next session to talk more about academic advising, uh, but hopefully you have all done and you're all preparing already. You are here today, so it's a great first step. I am emphasizing to complete your required steps at the checklist.umn.edu so you can select your orientation dates. So then you can register much earlier and select your fall classes. So then you can find out who your assigned advisor will be and who you will be meeting with when you arrive here in August. So again, preparing early is probably one of the best choices you have made in terms of selecting those classes much early. Um, thank you, Lizette and Angus, for answering a few questions around orientation and what to expect at our um, academic advising meetings. I will now be asking my our own internal colleagues in ISSS, Cody, to perhaps answer a few questions around F1 visas and I-20s. Um, Cody, could you tell us a little bit about what are the steps I need to take to receive an F1 student visa? I think that sounds more like a Nucci question. Oh, so then I'll be asking perhaps Nucci if she can step in and answer maybe what are some of the steps that a student would have to do in order to receive a student visa. And if you haven't joined our session um, in April, we do have some pre-recorded uh, webinars that talk about the step-by-step -step on how to apply for a visa if you haven't already done so. But Nucci, if you could introduce yourself and maybe share with us um, some 
few key items on um, what to have in mind when applying for a visa. Yeah, so hi everyone, uh, my name is Nuchi. I am the new student specialist at ISSS. Um, I would say that to apply to get your FO visa, you would have to um, request an I-20. And the only way that you can request that I-20 is through my ISSS. Uh, once you're logged into my ISSS, uh, you should be able to request your uh, I-20 under the admissions tab. Um, the I-20 takes about 10 business days for us to process. Um, and once you receive it, uh, you will apply for your visa. And Thank you, Nuchi. If folks have any questions, please review the information on our website. Uh, but I'll uh, perhaps Mary Beth has more items to add. I see that you have turned on your camera. So I'll invite you to add on more details as well. Yeah, thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Mary Beth Polk, and I am an F1 student advisor. So if you are going to have an F1 visa after you arrive, I can help answer all of your questions. Um, but yeah, once you receive your I-20, you are going to fill out what's called um, the DS-160. That's a visa application. Um, and I can put in the chat all of the um, visa requirements. You will also be required to pay what's called the I-901 CVIS fee. That's a fee that goes um, directly to the Department of Homeland Security, not to ISSS. And once you pay that, you fill out your DS-160, um, then your DS-160, that's your visa application. And then once, once you have filled that out, you'll have a way to schedule your visa appointment. Um, so you should plan to schedule your visa appointment at the consulate or embassy that's closest to where you live. Um, and we recommend scheduling that as soon as possible. Um, you know, depending on where you're located, you might need to wait for a little bit to find an appointment. Um, and so, um, yeah, you'll want to get that scheduled as soon as you can. Um, fill out the information exactly as it's listed on your I-20. And then um, to prepare for your visa interview, um, the consular officers are going to ask you, um, like, why did you choose the University of Minnesota? What are you planning to study? Um, they want to know that you are prepared, um, that you have a plan for coming here, why you're interested in coming here. They also, may ask you some questions about what are your plans after graduation. And so we've been told by the consular officers that they want to hear from you of why you're particularly interested in your program that you have applied to. Um, and they want to be able to have a conversation with you. Um, so they'll ask you for some documents. They may or may not review those in your interview. They really are interviewing you um, and not your documents. Um, we have some more tips on our website as well. And so, yeah, if you have any questions, you can always email ISSSnew at umn.edu, and we're happy to help with any questions related to your visa concerns. Thank you, Mary Beth, for adding on the additional details and for reminding students that, you know, it's um, practice your interviews, but then you shouldn't be too worried. They're not going to be, uh, they're going to be asking you questions around your studies. So um, watch the recordings. Uh, there's a lot of really good advice. And if you have any questions, let us know. And we always send out emails every month to remind you of the next steps. Um, I do have one more question for Cody, perhaps. Um, what are my new student requirements with ISSS? Can you remind us? I know you cover that, but I think it's good for us to be reminded. Sure. We, we uh, streamlined the requirements into a, an organized list called the New Global Gopher Required Tasks. It is divided into pre-arrival and post-arrival tasks. And so um, you can get so much of this process done before you arrive. That includes iPrep, that um, online course I mentioned earlier, and, um, and some other uh, 
information that we would collect from you. And then the post arrival is the check in process uh, that's waiting for some information that you don't get until you arrive. Uh, but then you upload your documents and um, go through that process. That's all online. And uh, once that list is finished, then we remove that registration hold from your account, and then you are free to change your registration at will. Thank you, Cody, for letting reminding us what are the required steps, um, including, as I will repeat over and over, the global go for required tasks as well. Um, I have someone uh, that has uh, submitted a question live uh, talking about their intended major displayed in their decision letter. Can I immediately tell my academic advisor during the first remote orientation, what about my registration for major classes during the first semester at the U? Should I take both classes covering liberal education requirements and my major requirements? I feel like this may be a question that Angus might be able to help us navigate, but mm -hmm. also um, I believe your um, perhaps maybe someone from our ISSS team might wanna answer because there are majors displayed in your I-20. So we'll do an academic question and then we'll talk about updating your I-20 as well. But um, I'll start so, with you. Yes. Um, okay. okay. Um, yeah, so if you're thinking that like, uh, if you wanna change your major or maybe have suddenly change your mind during the like before meeting one of the academic advisor, please tell us immediately. Then in that way, we will help you to take a look of like your major requirement. If you fulfill that major requirement, we might be able to help you to declare the major. But however, make sure that you are in the correct college. That is the reason why. If, you, if you're not in the co correct college, then you need to go through the transfer college process, which is you need to stay in your, in your college at least one semester first. Thank you, Angus. So that clarifies uh, for admitted students that you will have to be there for at least a semester. But Lisa, I see that you have turned on your camera because uh, your intended major is displayed in your I-20 as well, and you will use that to apply for a visa. So Lisa, can you give the students some recommendations of what is our answer for this? Sure. Um, hi, everybody. Lisa Ziegler, she, her pronouns. Uh, I'm part of the check-in and welcome team. So I'm one of the staff managing the ISSS new inbox. Uh, your major is displayed on your I-20. And if your major changes, you should request an update to the information on your I-20 after the change. However, most new students actually come to the university with a pre-major. So, you know, CLA students will have a Liber liberal arts and sciences major on their I-20. Um, CSE students will have an engineering general major on their I-20. And this is very common for new students, especially first year students. So even if you change your intended major and take classes towards that, uh, you may not need to change the major on your I-20 if you're still a pre-major student. But if you ever have any questions about if you need to update the information on your I-20 or not, just email us at ISSSNEW and we can provide you with an answer that's right for you. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you, Angus, for that question as well. So please email ISSSNEW if you have any questions about the major being shown um, in your I-20. Um, I will now like to invite our student leaders to maybe share about their experiences navigating orientation or anything to have in mind while navigating the campus. So, so Leanne and Jaden, I'll be asking you to share um, a few of your experiences here. But the first question is, how are students even commuting on campus? Um, is it possible to use like an electric scooter, for example? So Leanne, I'll ask you to maybe answer this. Okay, absolutely. Uh, Minneapolis, for example, is one of the most accessible cities when it comes to public transportation. So when we're talking on campus, there are uh, campus connectors that are circulating the campus so you can get anywhere you want to. And uh, also public buses. We have the universal pass on our U card, which is our ID, and we can uh, use that to go anywhere we want in the city. 
also we have a lot of electric scooters, bikes, cars, anything that is, you know, drivable is available to us, which is also everything is walking distance if you prefer to walk. So yeah, it's very accessible. So it sounds like once students arrive here, they'll be able to navigate and, you know, connect to the different uh, campuses as well. So thank you, Soliana. Um, Jaden, um, I'm going to invite you to introduce yourself. And can you tell us about how do you balance school life and your private life? Good morning, everyone. My name is Jaden Antoine, um, student athlete here at the U, wrapping up my final se semester. So I have a fair understanding of what it's like to have a difficult private life as well as school life. But um, to answer the question, it's really good. A really good question because for a while I was struggling with um figuring out how to balance my work life and private life and school life. And I figured out that understanding your limitations and respecting your own time are important. So for example, feel feel free to tell everyone, including yourself, that I may need two hours during noon, um, just for some time to rest and reflect. To um maybe have some lunch, you know, and um that way you can focus on finishing everything you need to get done by let's say 5 p.m. Or maybe you cannot study or work before 9 a.m. because you may not be a morning person. So making your class schedule tailored to suit your needs and not really focus on early classes, or even if you're not the best late person, not having late classes and um uh, Making sure you give yourself enough time to rest, um, review, and connect with others. But most importantly, enjoy your life here at the U of M campus. And there are multiple apps and software, things such as Google Calendar, um, to help you stay on top of your schedule and make one that works for you and that is best for you. And yeah, that's breaking things up to be time sensitive. Thank you, Jaden, for reminding students to be mindful of their own time. And you mentioned selecting classes. You know, if you're not a morning person, don't select an 8 a.m. classes. Again, a reminder to students, you can register for classes uh, much. You know, you can register for remote. You can do remote registration now. So select your classes so that it fits your own um, sleep schedule, right? If you're not a morning person, those 8 a.m. classes in a St. Paul campus might be too far for you, right? But if you're a morning person, those are sometimes one of the best classes to take because there's going to be more openings as well. So thank you, Jaden, for sharing that. Um, someone on the Q&A asked, are there any student groups to connect with students or what are some other ways we can be connected? So Soliana and Jaden, have you found ways in which you have connected with other students? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are a lot of ways to stay connected with students that you may not identify at first. The obvious ones being in class, just uh, the first day you would walk in, you would talk to people around you and you would make friends because nobody knows anybody in that class. Uh, also clubs, there are a lot of student organization here at the U. I am personally part of several and they have events like every week. So you can go there, uh, mingle with people and get to know each other, especially attending events specifically for freshmen, since a lot of people are using that as a means to find friends. That would be very helpful. And yeah, just go outside. Even if you're in the dorms, staying in the communal rooms is going to be a very nice opportunity to make friends. Jaden, if you have anything to add. Oh, so I am... Um... When you all arrive at campus, Kaufman Memorial Hall um, has a lot of student groups and unions where they um, set up their offices. I believe it's on the second floor, but um, feel free to connect, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, in Kaufman is where you will find a lot of student groups and student unions um, making themselves available for the student body. So feel free to take a look at Kaufman and see if any of these groups appeal to you. Well, One thank thing you. Oh, go ahead, I'd so like yeah. to add, sorry, is uh, especially if you're looking for international friends attending uh, Global Gopher Experience events, especially webinars, like right now you can just 
chat with each other and also there's going to be in-person events when you attend campus so I think that's one of the easiest ways to make friends I made one of my first friends from orientation and attending one of our events so yeah just check check us out Thank you, Soliana and Jaden, for sharing your experiences of what it's like to be an international student here at the University of Minnesota. Again, a lot of these programs are required, but some of the best benefits is like a lot of our students end up finding some of their closest friends during orientation and some of our um, sessions as well. So again, thank you to our campus partners, Kaoru, Lizette, and Angus, who are here joining us from different campuses, from different um, offices, as well as our own folks here in ISSS. Many, many thanks for being here this morning. This wraps up our Q&A and uh, questions and answer. Uh, reminder, complete your required steps at checklist.umn.edu to find out when your registrations, um, when your orientations will be scheduled at. And if you have additional questions, please email us at issnew at umn.edu. I will now be passing um, um, this on to Angus who will be telling us about the next session that we will be having. And then we will be sending the chat on the chat how to register for the session. But Angus, can you tell us what to expect at our next webinar next week? Yes, our next webinar will be talk about academic advisor. Like you might be not understanding, wait, what? What is academic advisor? Yes, that is the section for you. Like, because we will basically tell you what does that mean? And then how we academic advisor could help you. That will be next week. Uh, May 29th, 8 to 9 a.m. Central Time. Thank you, Angus. So you will get to see him and many people from this group again next week. On behalf of the University of Minnesota, we thank you for choosing us to be your home for the next two to four years and for your trust in us. I very much look forward to meeting you all in person. I know we are all super excited to see you when you come to campus please say hi to us so we know that you attended one of our sessions. We will be more than happy to connect with you and welcome you in person. You're a valuable part of the University of Minnesota, and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. I will now have, um, we will now play a quick video, but thank you all. You don't have to stay for the video, but this is uh, a dance from Goldie Gopher. Welcome to the U.
a puppet. We've been so phenomenally. You're more like the way we rock it. So don't stop that. to seeing you all at our next webinar. Thank you, everybody, and goodbye.